Hey guys, TJ here, back with you, part two of our presidential series, part eight, taking a look at the, what number president, Henry? Ninth. Ninth president, and who is it? William Henry Harrison. That's right, William Henry Harrison. Got my son Henry here with me again. Uh, we're going to jump right in. So, as I was saying, we're actually going to take a look here on your screen. Uh, this is actually the church, it is the, um, the Zion Lutheran Church, where the uh, presidential convention was held uh, in 1839. So the Whig Party, the Whig Party Convention of December of 1839, they met there in this church and they nominated William Henry Harrison. Um, so this was pretty cool. I, this is actually in uh, Pennsylvania, uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania to be exact. So take a look at these uh, two videos and this little audio. And uh, yeah, take a, take a look and a listen. So you can uh, learn a little bit about the... Convention of 1839. Hey guys, how's it going? TJ here from Dead History. And that behind me is actually the Zion Lutheran Church here in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And some very interesting, fun facts about this church regarding William Henry Harrison. So let me flip you guys around. Hold on. <clears throat> there we go. So there's the church. Beautiful, beautiful old church. Across the road safely. There's actually the uh, state capitol building there in uh, Harrisburg. So here you go, presidential convention. The Whig Convention of December 1839 met in this church and nominated William Henry Harrison for president, John Tyler for vice president, and popularized as Tip Canoe and Tyler II. They were elected in 1840. So very interesting stuff, very, very cool stuff. So there it is again. So this is the church, Zion Lutheran Church. It's really beautiful, you know, beautiful old building. It's a shame I can't get in, but you know, it is what it is. I'm sure it's closed during the week anyway. And then of course, you know, COVID reasons. So that's pretty much it though. Pretty cool stuff. There is some uh, artifacts, and you can actually see where the actual convention took place inside the building. Um, but obviously, I can't get inside the building right now. So, pretty interesting stuff, pretty cool stuff. And that is Zion Lutheran Church, where the Whig Party Convention was held in 1839. So, pretty cool. Glad that I got to see this and glad I got to show you guys this. Some more looks. Let's see if I can just see anything in this uh, little entrance here. It looks like an office entrance. Yeah. Really nothing I can see though. All right. Well, there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you enjoyed this look at Zion Lutheran Church here in Harrisburg. William Henry Harrison was right here, nominated in 1839 and won the election in 1840. Thanks, guys. All right, I'm actually standing outside of that Lutheran Church, so I'm going to read a little uh, history about this church to you guys. So, Wake Convention of 1839. In its effort to defeat the incumbent Democrat, Martin Van Buren, the Whig Party decided to hold a presidential nominating convention in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania at the end of 1839. The only building available that was large enough to serve their needs was the newly reconstructed Zion Lutheran Church. And meeting here in December 4th through the 7th of 1839, the convention resulted in the nomination of William Henry Harrison of Ohio for president and John Tyler of Virginia for vice president. A disparaging remark against Harrison concerning a log cabin and hard cider was spun by his campaign into a winning slogan casting him as a man of the people. Visitors to Zion can see where the actual convention took place along with several artifacts relating to the 1839 convention and the campaign of 1840. So um, the church is closed of course due to COVID. I'm sure they probably do hold mass here on uh, Sundays, but I can't get in right now. But pretty cool stuff. So 
Gonna show you another video. So there you go, William Henry Harrison, the convention of 1839. He actually won the election of 1840 with 80% of the vote. Um, he actually first ran and he lost in 1836, but in 1840, he slayed Martin Van Buren. Um, I talked about that in our last video uh, about Van Buren, but, um, and it was actually the very first uh, modern campaign complete with advertising and campaign slogans. So pretty cool stuff. Um, also just some other fun facts. Uh, like I told you, I was going to touch on, he actually turned William Henry Harrison turned a native American prophet into an actual prophet. Uh, Harrison, he served as governor of the Indiana territory, which I told you it actually consisted of future states, Indiana, Illinois, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Eastern Minnesota. That was from 1801 to 1812. As governor, he uh, spearheaded the acquisition of land that belonged to Native American tribes. This duty ratcheted up the already high tension between tribes and the American government and the expansion plans of America. Um, and it basically drove Harrison into a quarrel with the legendary Shawnee leaders, uh, Tecumseh, and his brother, the self-proclaimed prophet, uh, Tensqua Tawa, 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 I i am so butchering that name, so I'm going to have to learn how to actually say it. Um, any Tenskwatawa. Anyway, Harrison wrote a letter denouncing him and dared him to cause the sun to stand still, the moon to alter its course, the rivers to cease to flow, or the dead to rise from their graves, to prove, prove his prophetic abilities. Um, the letter reached... Ten Scottawa, whatever his name is, right, Henry? I don't know his name, right? <laughs> <laughs> Who said he would demonstrate his powers by darkening the sum sun in the summer of 1806. A few weeks later, a solar eclipse occurred, and the prophet claimed his knowledge of the event provided the requisite proof of his powers. So, kind of, kind of pretty cool. Um, interesting stuff. <clears throat> Obviously, as I said, he came from a very prominent political family. Um, his inauguration speech was the longest to date, um, and uh, pretty interesting stuff. Actually, with his inauguration speech, so with his inauguration speech, uh, he actually he was sixty eight years old. He did not wear a coat, hat, or gloves, and it was the longest speech of all time. It was ninety minutes long. He wrote it all by himself. It was edited by uh, former Senator Daniel Webster. But it was spanned 8,445 words. Unbelievable. It covered personal issues as well as political issues. Um, it was an attempt to make the log cabin and hard cider candidate seem more presidential. Um, it was totally unbelievable. And his tenure as president uh, lasted only... Some historians say 33 days, some say 30, some say 31. But the bottom line is, it was only a few weeks. Uh, basically, after taking office, Harrison uh, felt ill. He was complaining of fatigue and anxiety. He summoned his doctor, Thomas Miller, to the White House. Miller treated Harrison with the standard medications and practices of the day, including opium and enemas. Miller reported Harrison had a sinking pulse and cold, blue extremities, uh, and after eight days of delirium and pain, Harrison, came, Harrison became the first American president to die in office. Um, some historians speculate awesome. office, office, oh. meaning office of presidency. Yep. Yeah. Some historians speculate Harrison caught a cold during his long inauguration speech, but and it developed developed into a pneumonia. However, um, Miller, his doctor, listed Harrison's cause of death as pneumonia of the lower lobe of the right lung, complicated by congestions of the congestion of the liver. But modern scholars and historians think the explanation may be more complicated. In those days, Washington, D.C. had no sewer system, and the White House and its water supply sat mere blocks from a marsh that held a depository of basically human ex excrement, night soil, as they called it, and waste that was hauled in every day. So it was very, very unsanitary. Harrison likely suffered from... Uh, enteric fever caused by one of two bacteria, Salmonella um, or par paratyphi, paratypha. It, it looks like like a parasite that devastated his gastrointestinal system. So um, yeah, so it was like basically like gastro uh, ent enteritis type thing, uh, as they say. Um, so that's kind of what they think he really did die from, inevitably. 
So, really interesting stuff. Um, what else can I tell you? Of course, here we go now. We're going to take a look at where Harrison was born. Uh, Harrison was uh, the seventh and the youngest child of Benjamin Harris V and Elizabeth Bassett Harrison. He was born on February 9th of 1773 uh, at Berkeley Plantation. It was the Harrison family home along the James River in Charles City County, Virginia. So um, this was actually my um, visit to the uh, Berkeley Plantation. Interesting, funny story about this. I was actually going to see his father's gravesite, which is on the property, since he's a signer of the Declaration, and I, I also went to visit all of those, or most of them, I should say. Um, so when I went, as you see here in this picture, um, there was a downed tree from a, a recent storm across the dirt part, like driveway and roadway. Now, it is a long driveway it's probably about a mile to a mile and a half from this point that you're looking at in these pictures till you actually get to the berkeley plantation main manor home um so i it was not only was the tree you could not cross because of the tree the obstruction would not let anybody drive but it was also uh there was a chain link just one link kind of rope that went across basically indicating that it was closed as you can see, there's private property signs, all this stuff. Well, I was kind of determined. So what I did was I parked my car and I walked the entire length of the road. And there's other residents back there. So I was a little nervous. I was like, oh, no, am I going to get caught? And now you're seeing on your screen the actual Berkeley Plantation home. This is where William Henry Harrison was born. His father, Benjamin Harrison, the signer of the Declaration. This is where he lived. Um, so interesting stuff. So then I went to the, the grave of his father, which is kind of behind the home. You're seeing some other, you know, photos, this photo about, you know, first Thanksgivings, first sight of the first Thanksgiving, you know, all these different historical things. So after I visit his father's grave, I'm walking back and I'm walking along the side of the house on this dirt road. And all of a sudden I hear this rustling and I hear woo, 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 woo. these dogs. And these two barking dogs, here they come charging at me. Keep in mind, I haven't seen another human being. And I'm on private property that I shouldn't be. And here come these two dogs charging at me. Needless to say, I think I pretty much had an accident in my pants. <laughs> I mean, turned out that the one dog didn't care. He just kind of stopped. That's funny, right, Henry? Yeah. Um, the other dog was like a retriever or a lab. He was so friendly. He brought a stick over to me, wagging his tail. This dog followed me back to my car the entire, like, mile and a half, and I kept throwing the stick for him. He literally, and then when we got to the end of the road, he knew that, I guess that was his property, he knew to start running back toward... Uh, the house. Unbelievable. It was really funny, but scared the daylights out of me. So that's what you've been looking at here on the screen. The Berkeley Plantation where William Henry Harrison was born. So pretty interesting stuff. Uh, now this next, uh, here we go. This is the tomb of William Henry Harrison. Um, William Henry Harrison, his tomb is, is located in Ohio. Um, and it actually was closed, um, when I was, you know, going to go for because of COVID. It's located, it's actually North Bend, Ohio. Uh, it's like pretty much right outside of Cincinnati. Um, and I got in contact with uh, volunteers, uh, by the, uh, a guy by the name of Rod and a lovely lady named Bev. And I got in touch with them via email. And they said, you know, we can, somebody can meet you over there and unlock the tomb door because I'm sure you're seeing now on the screen, the pictures, you know, it's a, it's closed off, it's locked door. And yeah, Bev met me over there. She was wonderful. And uh, she let me in and I got to take these wonderful photos. This is William Henry Harrison's uh, tomb. Uh, and of course, his, uh, his uh, wife is buried in here with him, as you see. Um, so really, really, really cool stuff. This was another private a uh, one-on-one -on -one individual tour of a presidential tomb. Pretty cool stuff, right, Henry? Yes. Yeah, Henry wasn't with me, but he would have really enjoyed this. Obviously, you can see it's this big, huge, tall monument. Um, I, I, I forgot. I've read before how tall the actual uh, monument is, but it is ridiculously tall, as you see. Um, 
I'm actually I'm going to try to find that out. Maybe I can throw a throw a little blurb up on the screen for you guys when I'm editing this, so I can tell you how tall that uh, tomb is, that monument. But really cool, um, really interesting stuff. Uh, I loved it. I sat and talked to Bev for for a long, 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 long time, uh, probably about 45 minutes to an hour. And she was telling me all sorts of history about Harrison and about the tomb, of course. Uh, and just all these really, really interesting, neat things. So, um, you know, how like the that that monument that was originally not there when Harrison, of course, was buried. Uh, that big, tall, like obelisk monument that's there now um, that was built, I believe, in the early 1900s. I want to say again, I got to check all these facts. I'm trying to go off memory here. Um but really cool. I mean, really cool stuff. It originally was just this the tomb itself. It wasn't this tall monument. And they had vandalizing. People broke into the tomb. Just all sorts of crazy stuff. So there you go. That's kind of the life and the legacy of the man who was the first president to ever die in office. The man who gave the longest inauguration speech and address ever in the history of, uh, of our country. And the man who also had the shortest presidency of all time. Only about 30 to 33 days worth uh, of presidency. And that still stands to this day. So, interesting stuff. Um, next week, of course, will be part 9 of our presidential series. And we're going to take a look at the 10th president of the United States, William Henry Harrison's vice president, John Tyler. Who was the first pr uh, man to ever take over as president, being vice president, after a presidential death. So stay tuned for that. But uh, we really enjoyed this. We thank you guys for watching. We yes, thank you guys for do. joining. Subscribe, Bye. comment, do all that yes. great stuff, right? Yes. And stay tuned for next week. Thank you so very much, guys. Appreciate it. Bye-bye now.